Hey everybody, I shot a video not too long ago about why plants don't grow well in hard water. And when I first shot the video, I got some things very wrong about it, and I quickly deleted that video and posted a more accurate version of why plants don't grow well in hard water. But there was always something about it that was bugging at me that I was never able to really figure out even what, was, what it was that was bothering me until just the other day. I had one of those little moments where a piece of information finally clicked into place for me, and it makes a lot more sense now and so today we're going to talk about that and so first we need to talk about what I was mistaken about with the water hardness and why plants don't grow in it so originally I had thought that osmotic pressure had something to do with why plants didn't grow in hard water and that is to say that if there's dissolved minerals in the water outside the plant that are in a higher concentration than the dissolved minerals that are inside the plant the water is going to want to migrate out of the plant and this hard water all this dissolved calcium all this dissolved magnesium in the water would actually dehydrate your plant or at least prevent it from drawing fresh water in at a sufficient rate and this dehydration process is why you didn't have success at growing plants in hard water and I was quickly told that that was wrong and that it's not that at all and it turns out that it's not it's actually the pH very very typically when we have hard water we also have an an elevated pH and once the pH gets above about 7.5 you really struggle to grow most plants your pH really should be between 6.5 and 7 uh, to grow plants successfully it has to do with the nutrient uptake and all that kind of stuff and so where we have hard water we usually have high pH and so you just generally can't grow plants in hard water but it's not the hardness itself that is preventing that it's not the calcium and the magnesium that is preventing that it's the pH that's preventing that. If you have hard water, but you have a pH of 7, and that's not out of the question to have hard water with a lower pH. If you have hard water with a pH of 7, you can grow plants just fine in there. It's not the hardness, it's the pH. So that's all well and good. I understand that. That makes perfect sense. It lines up with what I know about my house plants and my garden plants. All that is perfectly reasonable. But there was still something that was bugging me, and it wasn't until the other day that I figured out what it was and that is why does aquarium salt kill our plants so quickly aquarium salt does not affect your hardness nor does it affect your pH so neither of the parameters that we typically associate with difficult to grow plants in is associated with aquarium salt but yet very small amounts of aquarium salt will kill our plants or at least stunt the growth of them dramatically and so I've been doing a little bit of research into why that is and first of all to clarify my confusion came from the fact that the sodium will actually hold moisture and so if you have plants that are on the roadside or if you're watering house plants with salty water uh, in those scenarios in the soil the salt will hold so much moisture that it will actually dehydrate your plants and so if you live on a road where they salt the roads and they plow and all the salty snow gets thrown in your yard you will often have a patch of dead grass in the spring along the the street and it's it's because of that reason it's the salt is actually dehydrating the plants by locking the moisture up in the soil so that's where I was getting that sort of dehydration idea but in our aquariums, the amount of salt that we're putting in there is not anywhere close to the amount of salt that should dehydrate our plants, and yet our plants still die. And the long and short of it, and I possibly could have made this a 15 second video, but the long and short of it is that sodium is toxic to plants. They do need some sodium, like most living things, but they need very small amounts of it. And even in the freshest of fresh water, there's enough sodium in it that your plants can take up enough just fine and so your plants do need potassium and there's also generally not a lot of potassium available and so the mechanism for taking in the potassium is an ionic uptake channel and the potassium ion is a positively charged ion and so it moves up this ionically charged channel into the plant and it does so freely well sodium is also a positively charged ion and it will readily go 
into that potassium channel and what happens immediately is the sodium begins blocking the potassium channel and so now you're starting to get a potassium deficiency and so even in very small doses the sodium will start having a negative impact on your plant once it starts getting in your plant it starts doing all kinds of other stuff it starts interfering with the way the calcium and the magnesium work it does interfere with the way water moves around in the plant the way new growth develops it does all kinds of stuff once it starts getting in your plant so the other aspect of it is that it's bioaccumulative your plants don't really have a mechanism of getting rid of the sodium as it's pouring into the plant so even small doses of it will begin accumulating in the plant and over time the plant will begin suffering from more sodium accumulation than you would think from even a small amount being put in the tank. So sodium has a lot to do with why our plants don't grow well in uh, saltier water. They'll grow well in hard water as long as the pH is right, but they won't grow in brackish water unless they're specialized plants that have developed the ability to grow in saltier water. But it's because of the sodium. It's not just dissolved mineral salts. It's sodium chloride, specifically the mineral salt sodium chloride. We always refer to this as uh, aquarium salt or table salt, but there are a lot of of mineral salts out there that are salts and so having your your hard water in your tank you're gonna have dissolved mineral salts in your tank but that's not what's affecting the plants it's the sodium in the sodium chloride and chloride is also toxic for plants when that begins building up in higher concentrations too but in the case of the sodium chloride it's the sodium that's impacting your plants long before uh, the chloride ever gets there so again it's just the sodium and so that's it. It's just that, that, that sodium is toxic to the plants, and because of the way plants are designed to take up potassium so readily, they also take up sodium readily, and so even small amounts of it become toxic to our plants. Uh, our fish are the same way. Our fish, a lot of them can't tolerate uh, higher dosages of sodium, and again, it's got not a lot to do with the harder water or softer water or osmoregulation. It's literally just the sodium concentration. You start putting too much sodium in the water, you know, adding too much aquarium salt of the water it's not the TDS amount you know it's not the amount of dissolved solids or this sort of osmoregulation thing it's literally sodium intake uh, that can be toxic for the fish if you're putting too much salty water in your aquarium so the, the main dosage that or the dosage that basically is the, the highest safe dosage for all plants and all fish even the sensitive ones is one tablespoon per five gallons so that's three teaspoons in five gallons of water less than one teaspoon per gallon is the highest dosage you can go before you're going to begin having seriously noticeable uh, negative effects on either your fish or your plants now most people will do one teaspoon per gallon and I've done that for short periods of time while treating a tank but I would not maintain one teaspoon per gallon over any kind of like long duration because of my plants that's you're, you're getting into dangerous territory even at one teaspoon per gallon if you've got a planted tank and again some plants are more tolerant than others I have mostly fairly tolerant plants so it's not terrible but if you've got some sensitive plants out there even a teaspoon per gallon of sodium chloride is toxic amounts of sodium for your plants and so that's it that was that one piece of information of like why does salt you know why does aquarium salt kill our plants so readily when all these other dissolved minerals don't and it's because all those other dissolved minerals simply aren't toxic to our plants and sodium is it's as simple as that so I'd like to hear your thoughts about that or whether you already knew that or whether that's something new to you or your thoughts on the osmo regulation process or whatever feel free to leave whatever comment you want uh, I will be happy to read it and I try to respond back to everybody so go ahead and leave your comment and I will try to get back to you so make sure you're subscribed don't forget to ring the bell and don't forget I do a live stream every Friday night and Sunday night at 8 p.m. and I also do a live stream every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. for my members only. So if you'd be interested in a little more private live stream, uh, be sure to join up for a membership. Basic membership gets you access to that. So otherwise, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell. Thanks for watching this one, and I will see you real soon on the next one.